Good day, everybody. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar, and today what I'm going to be talking about is a somewhat of a novel therapeutic option for certain types of toxicology, and that is the treatment modality known as um, IV fat or IV lipid emulsion therapy. And IV lipid emulsion therapy involves the intravenous administration of um, of a lipid uh, solutions. Uh, most of the lipid solutions that are currently that have been used or studied involve the use of uh, soybean oil and the the brand name for the particular uh, illipid emulsion that I'm going to be talking about today is known as intralipid intralipid so I'll just write that up here for you guys intralipid and it comes packaged as a 20% emulsion um, so it's 20% lipids, and it is 100% um, soybean oil. Um, those are all the lipids are, are derived from. Uh, now, the the somewhat of a novel use for this this therapy has uh, been for certain types of uh, toxicology. Um, specifically, we find this with a local anesthetic toxicity um, substances such as uh, bupivacaine for example and uh, there have been some cases and I believe the first case the first reported case of, of a successful uh, use of um, lipid emulsion therapy um, was reported in the literature back in 2006 and it involved a patient who uh, received um, a nerve block using um, bupivacaine. Bupivacaine of course is a um, is a cane it is a um, uh, fast sodium channel uh, blocking um, local anesthetic and because it uh, if it's a ability to block fast sodium channels it uh, can exhibit or exert membrane stabilizing effects so um, uh, inadvertent overdoses or toxicities of these types of um, uh, local anesthesia agents um, of course can be uh, very cardiotoxic and that's what happened with this particular patient went into cardiac arrest uh, conventional uh, ACLS, advanced cardiac life support uh, modalities were used to include uh, CPR, include defibrillation, the administration of epinephrine, um, etc. Uh, without any success uh, after several minutes. Um, at, that, at that point, uh, lipid emulsion therapy was used. The patient was administered a couple boluses of 20% intralipid solution and subsequently had return of spontaneous circulation went on to make um, from what I understand, a very good recovery, um, both neurologically and cardiovascular-wise. Um, there have been several uh, other reported cases um, of uh, intralipid uh, or uh, lipid uh, emulsion therapy being used uh, successfully in patients who uh, had a inadvertent um, uh, local anesthetic toxicities. Uh, and when we look at the research, the research is the, the actual. Mm, evidence out there is not um, robust by any means. Probably some of the best studies uh, come from an anesthesiologist, uh, Weinberg. Um, Weinberg and all released uh, several uh, studies uh, looking at the use of uh, lipids. In fact, he's involved in the lipid rescue uh, site, which is a site where they kind of have a um, unofficial uh, protocol. Uh, for using lipid emulsions, and I'll go ahead and actually link that in the description box for this video. Uh, so let's just talk about kind of the the proposed mechanisms of how um, IV lipid emulsion therapy uh, may work. Uh, the exact mechanisms are not known, but there are a couple of them. The the contender, the top contender at this point, is what's known as the lipid sink theory, or I would I would rather call it the lipid sink hypothesis. So it's the lipid. Maybe put a P in there, right? The lipid sink hypothesis or lipid sink theory. I prefer hypothesis since we don't really know. And basically what it says is it's, uh, let's try to draw an oversimplified picture here. So let's say that I have the human body here. And again, we're going to just go for really big, uh, um, big picture, if you will. So here I have the human body. All right. And within the human body, I'm going to draw the heart. And we know that in, in, in terms of bupivacaine toxicity, it, 
it, it involves blocking sodium channels in the heart, um, in addition to some other toxicological effects. And so the theory behind this is that the bupivacaine is a highly uh, lipophilic or lipophilic substance, so it is very good at interacting with lipids. So the theory goes as, this, as such, if I have a toxicity that involves, say, the heart or maybe another organ, what I can do is I can administer um, lipids, and the lipids will actually kind of make a kind of a separate compartment in the circulatory system, if you will. If you imagine if I were to just Again, looking big picture, maybe this is my entire circulatory system here, if you can imagine that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject some lipids into the body, and the lipids are not really going to want to interact too much with the actual circulatory system, so they're not going to diffuse out. Um, and they'll kind of stay together, if you will. And, and in a sense, they'll form their own compartment within the vascular compartment. So it'd basically be like creating perhaps a second compartment. So if we kind of apply that to the body, so now I've, I've administered these lipids and I've created another compartment within the body here. Okay, so here I have another compartment. This compartment is composed primarily of lipids and I have highly uh, lipo, lipophilic um, substance that I've overdosed on. That substance isn't going to want to be drawn into Okay, it'll be drawn into um, this this uh, other compartment. It'll be partitioned in that compartment, which means that it'll pull it um, away from the receptors. It'll free up the sodium channels, and the 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 conductive system of the heart then can um, begin functioning as normal, uh, or, or more normally at least. So that's the theory behind there. That's the the proposed mechanism behind the lipid sink hypothesis. Um, I, I should say that when looking at the evidence, it's not clear, it's not completely clear that this is the sole, uh, solely what's going on or even um, partially what's going on. There are other hypotheses out there of the lipid sink being probably a top contender at this point. So the lipid sink uh, mechanism is often talked about, but there there are a couple of other mechanisms that that, that perhaps uh, may may go into this as well. One of the other mechanisms is simply um, a, a metabolism a metabolism energy mechanism where um, the proposed mechanism for toxicity involves in, inhibiting. Uh, certain processes or cycles within the mitochondria, perhaps uh, in, in inhibiting enzyme systems or what have you, and that inhibits the production of adenosine triphosphate in the mitochondria, particularly of the uh, myocardial tissue, uh, and the administration of lipids uh, in, in some way reactivates some of these cycles or reactivate the, reactivates these enzymes or allows the cell to produce energy. Um, should put a Y there, huh? Uh, so that is one mechanism, and then uh, perhaps another mechanism is just simply um, due to the law of mass action. Okay, due to the law of mass action, I'm, I'm just simply taking, uh, I'm freeing those receptors uh, due to the law of mass action. Now it is important to say that the, the mechanism may not be any of these, or it may be a combination of these, or it may be uh, one of these and some other unknown mechanism. It's just not very well known, but those are the the contender hypotheses at this point. Um, now, when we look at the literature, uh, a lot of the literature um, is, is, is fairly isolated to some case studies. Um, I did see one study involving about uh, 90 patients or so, um, and there have been a lot of animal studies as well. There are several animal studies, and animal. Boy, I'm just not having a good day today. Been lots of animal studies, rats, dogs, um, ovine. Um, studies as well. I don't think there have been any bovine studies. Um, so the, the the data is is rather modest. I would, in in my opinion, um, I would say the actual literature is rather modest. Um, there is definitely good correlation, um, definitive causation. I'm not sure about, but definitely good correlation. Um, there are definitely many case studies, and again, 
um, you can check those out on the the site that I'll link you to. Um, but but nothing definitive, and um, the, we don't know the mechanism yet. But it does appear promising. There is definitely promise. Um, there's definitely promise when it comes to the use of um, intravenous lipid emulsion therapy. Uh, it's just not well studied at this point in time. And again, you know, the first real case of this actually working or, or, or possibly working um, dates back to 2006. So y y this is a fairly recent development in terms of, of, of how, uh, how medicine works. Um, so what I want to do is I want to talk about just the, the basic <clears throat> way that we can use this. Um, like I said, most of the, uh, the evidence out there is uh, based around um, highly lipophilic substances like bupivacaine, but in theory, other, other lipophilic uh, xenobiotics such as uh, tricyclic antidepressants uh, may respond uh, to lipid emulsion therapy as well. Um, and there are some cases of patients uh, that have uh, that are experiencing tricyclic antidepressant toxicities that have failed to respond to traditional therapy, uh, uh, urinary alkalinization of sodium bicarbonate, uh, fluid boluses, vasopressors, et cetera, et cetera, um, and that they've actually responded uh, well to intravenous fat emulsion therapy. But uh, I would say that the, the evidence isn't compelling enough for me to, to say that this should be a general standard of care everywhere. Uh, there are other people that disagree with me, of course. Um, but I would say, and I, I think most people would agree, that in the setting of a, a, a massive overdose of a, of a highly lipophilic substance that has failed to respond to traditional therapies, um, and you have a patient that is in a, in a, in a moribund state, I, I think it is reasonable at that point uh, to use lipid therapy um, as a, uh, a second or, or tertiary third line intervention um, if conventional traditional therapy has failed. And the protocols that I've seen um, typically revolve right around that, where you have a refractory situation. Okay, you have a patient. Uh, toxicologically refractory, and it, it and it has to be a lipophilic substance. There's been, been some, been at least one study that I'm aware of where uh, there there have been poly substance overdoses, and one one involved a lipophilic substance, and one involved a substance that wasn't particularly lipophilic, and the serum levels of the lipophilic substance decreased while there was no change for the other substance. So it does appear that fat emulsion therapy um, is not going to necessarily be effective for uh, other types of uh, you know, water-soluble uh, xenobiotics. Um, it's going to be, f uh, at least at this point, fairly specific to your, your lipophilic uh, substances, in particular your uh, some of your uh, local anesthetics, t uh, tricyclic antidepressants, and so on. So you have a patient in a refractory situation, uh, they're moribund, they're possibly in, in cardiovascular collapse or cardiac arrest. Um, and most of the, uh, the algorithms that I've seen used um, suggest initial loading dose of 1.5 milliliters per kilogram IV as a loading dose. Um, there are some other guidelines, and again, you can take a look at those if you want um, on the links that I'll provide in the description box below. This tends to be the standard starting the 1.5 milliliter per kilogram load, and typically what I see used is intralipid, uh, which is a 20% lipid emulsion. All right. All right. And looking at your, your, your generic 70 kilogram patient, that's going to equate to around 100 milliliters of uh, lipid emulsion up front. Uh, there are, uh, you can give subsequent uh, boluses and then you can even do uh, maintenance infusion therapy as well. Okay guys, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here. So uh, hopefully if this is something that, that you've heard about, hopefully this gives you a little, a little better idea of, of what's going on and what some of the proposed mechanisms are. And again, I'll give you some links to uh, to uh, ponder or to look over in the description box if you want to uh, look at this phenomena in a little more detail. As always, thanks for hanging in there, guys.